Check this out. My truck is driving itself. This is the Kama AI-3. Now, I'm not running the open pilot software that comes with this unit because I have a Ram 3500 HD truck. This is the 2020 model year. And the open pilot doesn't support the HD trucks. Out of the box, it will support the 1500. And you'll find several videos out there on YouTube of this being installed in a 1500. And the installation for this truck is the same, and the harness is the same. Now, I'm simply gonna talk about how I installed it. I'm not gonna actually show you like the other videos did. But I think that my simple explanation of this will be more helpful to you than the guy that I saw actually doing it. Because most of the people who've done it have done it completely wrong, and they've shown you a video of them doing it wrong. I'm simply gonna explain to you how to do this. Do not ever use a screwdriver or a metal object on your glass windshield and the plastic. You're gonna to wanna to get some plastic trim tools. Go down to your Harbor Freight and buy some plastic trim removal tools. Now, if you look, see this little panel here behind the mirror? Your mirror should not come off. Just move your mirror out of the way as best you can. Now what you wanna do is you wanna pull this panel outward. You wanna put a trim removal tool up in there and pull it this way and then up. It has some little forks that go down here and the thing will slide up and out, okay? So that's what you gotta concentrate on. You wanna remove that. Now this plastic cover here is held on by clips that go straight in. There's one there, one there, there's four. So by putting a plastic trim removal tool right up in here and here and prying downward, never use metal, only plastic. Now you might need to use a very sharp uh, wedge or something to get up in here, but you wanna pry this downward and it'll just pop without a lot of effort. Because I watched a video of another guy and he was putting it, you know, he was trying to use metal screwdrivers and putting his weight on it, trying to pull it. You need to use the torque force of a angled trim removal tool that you go in like this, you go clip, and this thing just pops right off. And then once you have um, this cover off, this whole thing will come out. And then your harness adapter, which goes right here, will just, you'll unplug the one that's there, plug your loop through in, and it's very simple. There's a little self-adhesive tape, you put that cable in. Now what I did, and I don't know if I'll be able to show this on camera, maybe you can see what I did there. I took this cover into my shop and I drilled a quarter inch hole at the bottom of it, um, and then, you know, kind of cut around it to make a U. That way, um, I could run the cord for the comma out, and you can see how that is run. See how simple that is? Now, the other piece of the puzzle here is you've got a flat ribbon cable that I use. also use the trim tool to slide up underneath my headliner, down this uh, port here, this way, down underneath this rubber, all the way down. And then there's a cover right here on the other side that pops off really easy, pop the cover off, and then that will drop down. And then once you get way down here, the OBD2, you'll be able to plug into the OBD2. Notice how I'm doing all this while the truck's driving itself, which is fantastic. Pulling a 40 foot car hauler. Okay. Now, they tell you that the mount for the actual module there needs to be applied 48 hours before. I gotta admit, I did not do that. I cleaned the windshield with alcohol. I mounted the module as straight as I possibly could while it was on, while the camera was on, so I could see its visual. And then I just took a pillow and I stuffed it between the dash and the unit so it put as much pressure on it as I could and I left it overnight. So the pillow was sitting on the dash, pushing up on it to, to make sure it was, was on there really good. Now this was a chilly night as well. And I think that helps. It helps that it's, it was a little cool. Um, because it's stuck, it's stuck like grim death and it's on there really well. Um, and that worked, worked out. Now, as I mentioned, the open pilot software that you download for this thing will not work on the HD trucks at the time of this recording, unless it's been updated. 
I did a bunch of searching before I found what I was looking for. Okay, some observations here. I'm out in West Texas. Speed limit is 85 in West Texas. And um, now, what I've noticed is that in around 83 to 85, you'll start to get this oscillation. It doesn't really like it. Now, we do have some cross winds going on here. And if you try to go above 92, theoretically, I've heard, not that I've done it, but it doesn't like that. It'll tell you that it's too fast. Um, and really, I think what the issue is that the, the computer, the cameras and the processing just can't seem to uh, manage it. Now, it seems to me like it likes the right side of the road better than the left. It seems to steer better. So at 87 here, I'm getting this kind of oscillation. I am drafting this truck, which is right in front of me here. But, I mean, if, you know, if you look in my mirror, you can see kind of where the, uh, where the lines are. And it's, it's holding pretty good. Oh, it, it, it slowed down. See, it's, it's paying attention. It slowed down to 71 because of that other truck slowed down. So when you're in this follow mode here, it's not really called follow mode, that's what I call it, but you know, your adaptive cruise control, you know, I have it set on kind of a minimum gap, which really, focus for me, there we go. Normally, uh, I, I, I'm doing that right now because I really want to draft this truck. Drafting means that you're, you know, you, you're using the wind that he's broken to help move you along and save gas mileage. But normally, with the truck and trailer, you would want to have that gap a little wider. But this dude up ahead of me has been hauling balls. This guy's been going like 95? <laughs> but when you think about it, if the speed limit's 85, right? And you're going 90, like what's the big deal? You're only going five over, right? That's Texas. So if you're a long haul trucker, this is a great thing. You see this little oscillation that I'm talking about? And it's these crosswinds, I think, and it's just trying to fight them. And it seems to only do that when you get over about 83. But then when you get going a little faster, it smooths out. It's doing okay. I'm gonna increase my gap here, right? And it's gonna slow me down from way back there. That's too much of a gap, honestly, because I like to be a little closer. So basically, I searched and searched and searched the internet, and there's there's Facebook forums, Reddit forums, Discords, and finally I found somebody who had dealt with this issue, and I am not like a hacker, I'm not a programmer, I don't know what I'm talking about. But they have, I think it's called a fork. The, the program that goes in here is called a fork. And somebody just posted the address, and so, when you're setting the thing up, it'll say, do you want to put in this address to download the software? Down in the link below, I'm going to post the link to the address that I use that downloaded the driving software that worked for my truck. It may not work for your truck. And if it doesn't, just uninstall it and, you know, go find the other software. I don't know how long this video will be up and how long, you know, you may be watching this video months or years later and uh, trying to deal with it. But I have the Kama AI version three. And at the time of this, it did not support this 2020 Ram 3500. So I'm recording this in uh, November of 2023. Things change every day and new software comes out every day and new support comes out every day. Um, it's only gonna get better. I've been using this for only today. Now, I've been on a road trip, which is about a 1200 mile trip, and it seems to be doing fantastic. Uh, some things that I've noticed about it, though, that it doesn't like about the the, the big trucks, this is a 3500, is, uh, as I've mentioned, um, it's, it's limited in a couple of different speeds. For one thing, you can't go below 35 miles an hour and have it operate. You can still use your standard adaptive cruise control but it won't drive for you like navigate. It won't make turns, change lanes. It won't stop at stoplights or read road signs. It just is an enhancement to your already existing lane assist 
and adaptive cruise control. It simply enhances that without as much nanny. You don't have to touch the steering wheel. You do have to have your head up and you do have to pay attention. It sees your eyes. Now I have very squinty eyes. Now people ask me my ancestry all the time. They ask me if I'm Asian. I am not. Um, but I could probably see that that could be a problem for people with skinny eyes like me because it, it does yell at me a lot and blink. You know, if I, if I, if I'm over here like this for a little bit, let's just do this and wait for it to start complaining. It will tell me any second now that, um, I need to pay attention and, um, it, well, it didn't do it. I don't know. Let's see. If I look down, I'm looking down. I can't help but look up. There it goes. There it goes. Pay attention. Pay attention. Driver distracted. So you can't just go to sleep in this thing. You can look away for a few seconds and do something, but it wants you to pay attention. But at least I don't have to hold the wheel. Uh, but if you're looking down, looking at your phone, texting or something, it doesn't like that. It won't put up with that. So it's not like you could just hop in the back and go to sleep. I'm waiting for that technology. For some reason, whatever frequency this thing is on just will not cooperate with my camera. It just, you can't seem to take a picture of it. Um, on camera, it's got those wavy lines. I don't know why it does that, but it, it, it do. Anyway, um, so that's my experience with it. It's cost about 1500 bucks with tax, shipping, the harness, everything. Is it worth it? Yeah, I think it is. If you were a long haul hotshot trucker, um, and also if you're somebody who like drives the speed limit and is an aggressive, you can just sit here. It's great. You sit here and watch Netflix and TikTok videos all day long. It's fantastic. You get going over 83, it starts to oscillate. If you go 92 or more, it'll it doesn't like that. Won't go below 35. Those are the those are the problems it has. Also. The, the Rams, the Dodgers, whatever you want to call them, they don't seem to have the torque steer power. So when you come across a, a, a hard turn, it will tell you that you need to help it. But when you're out in the middle of nowhere in Texas or out in the desert, you're on these trips like this, it just, it's effortless. Now, let's show a lane change. We're gonna, you just put your thing on here, turn your blinker on, and it will kind of complete the change for you. See that what it did? So it won't change lanes for you, but kinda, I've got this thing set at a little higher speed. We'll go around this truck, right? Effortlessly, because it's a 3500. By the way, I've got everything that Banks makes for this thing. Pedal Monster, it's got every single Banks modification on it. This thing is a hot rod. All right, let me fix my gear. Put that back up. Okay, we're gonna change lanes again. I'll just put my blinker on, and there it goes. And it, and it changed lanes. There it is. So, um, this is the future, guys. Comma AI. It's pretty cool. I like it. All right. A little follow up on this. It's almost two weeks later after the first videos I posted when I was driving to Texas. I've been here in Dallas now, <clears throat> like I said, almost two weeks. And I've been driving this thing around Dallas, or it's been driving me around Dallas. And I wanted to share some of my final thoughts as this thing drives me through Arlington, very busy area. It's not doing it right now because I'm going pretty slow, but I've noticed a lot of oscillation in the steering wheel, at least on the 3500. Again, the, uh, the, the Comma 3, open pilot doesn't support the heavy duty trucks it's made for the 1500 so i used uh the, this other sunny pilot program so that it would <clears throat> and um it seems to work pretty good here i'll change lanes once you initiate the change lane it'll complete it the screen i've noticed that it seems to cheat a bit to the right Let's see if i could zoom in on my mirror and you can see where i'm riding it seems to cheat a little let me zoom out there we go zoom out for natty there we go okay i'm going i'm going pretty reasonable speed but i notice if i go a little faster let me speed it up here let's kick it up to like 
85. Now, it'll only go as fast as the car in front of me. Of course, that guy gets over. Let me, well, there's somebody there. Hold on. I can't, I can't do it now because this guy is in the way. But I want to try to demonstrate. See this oscillation here? You see this? And I think it's because the truck bounces around. The heavy duties bounce around when they don't have a load on them. When I had the trailer on it, when you've got 10, 15,000 pounds on it, it doesn't do that so much. But when it's empty, these dualies ride like shit. It's like driving around in a bucking Bronco. <laughs> and a personal note, just for me, if you buy a dually truck and you're not hauling a 20,000 pound gooseneck trailer, you're just a dipshit. I'll just say it. There's no point in owning this truck. It's made for being a tractor. And I use it for that intended purpose. I really wish I'd have just got the 2,500 four wheel version instead of the dually. But anyway, that being said, this thing, uh, it does great. And uh, I'm, if I could, this is the thing that sucks about living in Dallas, the fucking traffic. <clears throat> All right, here we go. We're gonna get some speed going here. I set the speed at 85. Ooh, it handled that pretty good. It scared me a little. Because the thing about Texas, you got a lot of twisty, twisty, windy roads like this. And I mean, God damn, you just bounce around like, ah, oh, fuck. Driving this thing sucks without a trailer. But look how it's all over the place. That's handling it really well. It's handling it great. There's a lot of oscillation going on. So I think the reason that they did not support these HD trucks is because they found it to be a little too squirrely. It is. You can make it work, but you're gonna, it actually works best with a trailer. This truck performs best with, I'd say, 15,000 pounds, at least. At least 10,000 pounds of trailer behind it. Gooseneck, preferably. There's no point in driving the truck otherwise. You, just, you need a new, new set of kidneys. This is a brand new 2020 truck. Now, you know, I need to put airbags on it or whatever. It doesn't have the airbags. But see how it's, I mean, it's, now this guy's, I had to grab the wheel there because that idiot was drifting into my lane. And it's not gonna account for that. It doesn't have the the technology, it doesn't have the ability. Like if this if this truck up here were to come into my lane, like I'm that's I'm dead. <clears throat> this technology doesn't, I don't think, understand that there's another car there. It just looks to where it thinks the line is and where the shoulder is. I've also noticed it doesn't like being on the third lane in the passing lane. It prefers to be over in the middle or maybe the first lane. It doesn't seem to like it over here. Because even if you're in the um, second or first lane, it will assume there's a shoulder over here. Let's change lanes, right? Blinker on, watch, it'll just do it. Now you turn the blinker off and it'll, it'll find the lane, it'll stop. So it will change lanes for you. It has to aggressively correct itself. But look at the way it's, it's fighting back and forth. You kind of ping pong a little bit. And that's because we're at this speed. Let me slow it down. Let me slow it down to 74. Change lanes again. We're going to get in the first lane. I know this video is kind of long and boring and I'm vamping and I'm talking a lot, but <clears throat> if you're going to invest, I don't know, 1500 bucks in the time and effort it takes to put this in, you need to understand what you're getting into. And obviously the technology is going to get better because we're in uh, November of 2023. I'm recording this video. <clears throat> so... It works pretty well. Um, if you are a long haul trucker, this is a must. I feel it's a must. Pulling a trailer, um, it, there's just no choice about it. So if you're gonna purchase a truck for long haul trucking, I would recommend getting, no matter, it doesn't matter if you get the, the, the Ford, the Chevy or Dodge. I, I don't know what they support on those other trucks. We know that it works on this truck. Um, I, I'd like to see some, some people's, you know, videos on the new Duramaxes, the GMCs and the Chevys, but this is it with the Dodge. So I hope that this video helped you a bit. You understand how it installs and how it's going to perform. 
there will be better software upgrades, I'm sure. But for now, for what it does for right now, it seems to work pretty good. So that's my opinion of the whole thing. I wanted to do this little follow-up. I wanted to drive it around for a couple of weeks before I posted the video. That's why it took me so long to do the video. Because I really wanted to have a formed, educated opinion about it. And I think I'm there. I'm not an expert, but I am definitely a user, so. All right, guys, clearly you're gonna have a lot of questions about this thing. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you. All your questions will be answered down in the video description and in the comments. So please go to the description in the comments and uh, I will answer your questions there. I will update links to things as I find them. And uh, that's just how we're gonna do it. So thank you so much for watching. This isn't my normal content, but if you enjoyed hanging out with me, please subscribe. All right, thank you guys. Bye. Let me just sum this up by saying that I do not represent Ram trucks, comma AI. This video is for educational purposes only. Uh, I am not, this is not financial advice. I am not an attorney. I'm a, not a paid spokesperson. Blah, 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 blah. Do this at your own risk. <laughs>